Welcome back to The Place of Places, a chapter-by-chapter -chapter analysis of William Soroyan's 1972 memoir, Places Where I've Done Time. Today, we examine Chapter 19, Danish Creamery, Fresno Street, Fresno, 1922. This place was cool, that's all, it was cool. This chapter focuses on a simple moment in Soroyan's past, a place that made him feel good. In 1922, Soroyan was 13, going on 14, and a messenger for the Postal Telegraph Company. As we've learned so far, he had to always be moving. The messenger job was sometimes grueling in the Fresno heat, and Soroyan would find his way into refreshing places around Fresno. The first, we've learned, was the White Fawn Saloon, no longer open. The second was the Danish Creamery on Fresno Street, still a thriving company today, though no longer on Fresno Street. As Soroyan tells us in this chapter, the Danes came to Fresno around the same time as the Armenians. The Armenians were drawn to using the land for vineyards and orchards while the Danes drifted back to their ancestral practice of dairy production. Founded in 1895, the Danish Creamery was a collective led by Hans Graf and other Danes. Dairy cooperatives were already popular in Denmark. The company grew and merged with other companies to eventually form California Dairies Inc which today produces 9% of the milk in the United States. In 1922, they were already well established and their butter was considered high quality, a Fresno success story. Soroyan doesn't dwell on their story, but it doesn't go unnoticed that they were immigrants who were succeeding in America, the common story of Fresno. Of course, as Europeans, the Danes didn't face the same redlining and discrimination that non-European immigrants faced in Fresno. The Fresno Morning Republican newspaper even had an entire section called Scandinavian Notes, which reported on successful partnerships between Danes and Americans, as well as news from the old country. Today, Solvang is the best known Danish town in California and the Danes were establishing that town in the early 1900s, at the same time as they were settling in the central valley towns of Fresno and Selma. Nearby Kingsburg was populated by Swedes. In 1920, California had the highest number of Danish-born residents of any state in the U.S. at 18,721. Across the street from the Hippodrome, which featured movies, newsreels, and vaudeville that Soroyan frequented, one could watch girls shaping butter into cubes and slabs. Soroyan makes a point of describing how sterile and clean the Danish creamery was. The creamery faced girls with the creamery bare arms stood behind the marble counter on which rested always four big glass pitchers of buttermilk. Everything fresh and cool and clean, and not one fly, not even a baby fly, in the place. It conveys heaven. Being agricultural, Fresno was a dusty town. To go into a place this pristine was something special, and raised his stature. He remarks that a judge for the Superior Court sat and drank unlimited glasses of buttermilk at the same counter, and here we see Soroyan's ambition emerging again. Although he came from the dusty streets, he too could pay his way and sit with the upper crust of Fresno. His entire career was predicated on the concept that against all odds and systemic discrimination against certain immigrants, they could and would succeed in America. Meanwhile, this chapter demonstrates his poetic inclinations. I remember this place continuously. I really lived there. Hot, hot, hot everywhere in the world. The body moving at the business of pushing a bike all over the town. The juices going dry. 
the sweat pouring out of the skin, six glasses of buttermilk, cool, cool, and the man of 13 or 14 was ready to hit the road again, cheering Denmark. A good percentage of this chapter reflects the burgeoning sexuality of a teenage boy watching those unblemished girls work with their hands, but Soroyan uncharacteristically leaves that mostly to the reader's imagination and doesn't belabor the point. Still, the language surges with nostalgia, being young and full of life and passion. Today, one can picture it as an air-conditioned, refrigerated place where desserts abound, like an ice cream shop. For William, this would have provided significant nutrition for low cost, which might have been hard to come by for a growing boy in a poor family. Despite the boosterism in California in the early 1900s, welcoming people to bounteous, cheap land, life wasn't always easy in the Golden State. But here at the Danish creamery, a little slice of heaven prevailed. While this chapter may be light on deep analysis, it shows that impact came in many forms for Soroyan, as it does for us all. A fond childhood memory may have the same emotional dynamism as a life-changing moment in adulthood, and Soroyan makes no distinction between the two. For him, meaning can be gleaned from moments large and small, complex and simple, and in that way he urges the reader to find significance in every type of moment that ultimately makes us who we are, flawed and perfect, alternatingly. This chapter conjures the magic of the time and place and of boyhood and stamina in a piece of history that cannot be recreated today. Pleasure is fleeting. Let's put this on the Saroyan map and move on.